So uh, welcome to 45 Drives Tech Tips. Uh, this is the second time in a row that the good people here at Tech Tips have allowed me to get in front of the camera. Um, and okay, so today, uh, more about Ceph. Hey, last time I talked about Ceph clusters and the whole decision of whether you're ready for clustering. Okay, so clustering key points. For a small organization, it's high availability. And for a growing organization, uh, it's all about scalability in data capacity and scalability in performance. So if that's relevant to you, um, let's talk about clustering. And in particular, we're going to talk about clustering with Ceph. So 45 drives, we have an open model hardware, and uh, we have very much uh, focused all our clustering efforts on Ceph because Ceph is number one, has critical mass as an open source project. Okay? And because Ceph works incredibly well, it's, it's incredibly well structured, got something called a crush algorithm at the heart of it. It is incredibly well thought out and well implemented. And uh, of course, for somebody using it, it's got that nice advantage, it's got no licensing fees. Okay? So at 45 Drives, what we do is we sell storage servers and we sell a lot of clusters and uh, the clusters that we sell have Ceph on them and we're a single point of responsibility for software, uh, hardware, uh, implementation and, uh, and, and for help and support along the way. So, um, anyway, un understanding Ceph. Okay, and I'm going to talk about Ceph in the context of Ceph in the context of using our, our software. But if you're just interested in Ceph, uh, like we're an open company, we're an open model, and this stuff generalizes, and anybody else is interested in Ceph, this stuff applies. Okay. I'm going to make some simplifications off the way. So, first thing about Ceph. So, we talked about Ceph, uh, the minimum configuration for it, okay? And again, I like to think about this stuff in terms of servers that go into a rack that are connected uh, into a network. So let me draw up my starter Ceph cluster, okay? And let me draw it in a very physical way. This is a rack, and uh, I don't know if these drawings are actually useful to anybody, but they help me. Server number one, server number two, server number three. Number of hard drives in here, doesn't matter how many uh, for, the, for what I'm gonna talk about. And these servers are all tied together into my network, okay? I can also put in a back-end network, that's a subject for another video, um, but uh, right now we're going to talk about that. So that's my basic cluster configuration. So th this, is, this is my, let me draw that out, that's my network that goes to the rest of the company. And um, okay, so the thing about, about Ceph is there is, so what is Ceph? Ceph was a, uh, it's a software system, okay? and it's software defined storage. Um, and what Ceph does, the prime thing that it does, okay, um, it, it ties everything together. Basically, the Ceph software system, the core of Ceph, manages, actually it manages something that they call OSDs. What's an OSD? It's an object storage daemon. Okay? That's a piece of software that actually runs on each server that manages each hard drive that's in the system. Okay? So the, and, and basically, and, and those OSDs, everything's in a hierarchy in Ceph. Okay? Why? Because it's physically in a hierarchy. Okay? We've got hard drives. What's the next level of the hierarchy? Typically server. It's flexible. You can set up your own hierarchies, but, but the typical one is server. So we've got hard drives. They're in a server. Servers are in racks. My cluster could grow it. It could have multiple racks. Okay? And having that, knowing that hierarchy is useful, we're going to talk about that later. Okay? So it has OSDs, and it manages those OSDs, and it knows where they are in the hierarchy. To grow your cluster, all you need to do is just either simply add more hard drives in your existing servers, if you happen to have slots. You run out of slots, what do you do to grow it? Another server. Plug it into your network, go to the Ceph dashboard, add it in. Okay, the Ceph software engine will manage all that stuff, combine those, and, uh, and, 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 and just make them work the way that you want them to work. So that's all there is to it physically. So I'm gonna to go to the next level in this and I'm gonna talk about pools, something called storage pools. So, and I'm gonna to go to a whole different diagram here. So Ceph is highly abstracted and, and sort of one view of what Ceph, uh, Ceph is looks like this. We have the Ceph software system that runs on top of, uh, that, that, that manages our 
servers which contain OSDs. Okay? And really, all it knows is that we have OSDs and it understands the hierarchy that they're in. And it speaks to them. Where does the Ceph software run? It's co-located. Typically, it's co-located in the servers. There's certain pieces of it I'll talk about in another issue of this. I'll talk about it uh, where we co-locate them on separate servers for performance reasons. But most small, medium companies can just co-locate all the Ceph software right onto the servers themselves. Okay. And, okay, pools are something that's built on top of the Ceph uh, object storage software. Okay. And pools are defined by the user. You go into the Ceph dashboard to create pools. So what a pool is, a pool is a virtual software storage space. Okay. And the data, okay, to the user, so we create a pool. Okay. And that pool, what do we want to do? The next thing we do in a pool is we share that pool. Okay. It's got to connect to clients. Okay. So how can it share? It can share in a whole bunch of different ways. Uh, it can share uh, oh, by a file system. We can run a file system on top of that pool. We can run uh, block access on that. So we can, so it's uh, iSCSI uh, to enable iSCSI. And uh, the other thing we can do on is we can actually store objects on that. So what's ab objects are abstract to a lot of people. Uh, and, 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 you know, really... Uh, what we see most of the time, the vast majority of our clients store files on there. Second is block. And uh, an object storage, well, when we use object storage, well, number one, if you're creating something very, very specific, uh, you know, somebody like Facebook would use object storage and they'd store objects directly to their server and recall them directly back. How do you do that? Uh, you, you, you use an uh, API and uh, that comes with Ceph and you program it directly. But the more common usage of it would be to get S3 access, just like if you're using Amazon or Azure or uh, cloud storage. Cloud storage has done its objects and it uses an S3 interface on it. Okay. So that's how we sh share data out. Okay. We create a pool and then we create shares. Let's zero in on file storage. Okay. And, and just talk about an example here. Uh, let's say I have a network that consists of Windows clients. Okay? They like to access files through SMB. Okay? So we set, up a, a, we set up an appropriate pool okay? and we share it out via SMB over the network. And we go through, it runs beautifully with uh, uh, highly compatible with Active Directory if you're an Active Directory user. So uh, this just becomes a, so, so this pool you set up can be shared out over your network, just like anything else that's shared out over your network. Okay? Except there is no single point of failure, and this pool is incredibly flexible. You can define it in any which way you want in software. And you never have to go back to your servers because your Ceph software system, object storage system, is managing all the servers for you. Okay? So that's why they call it software-defined storage. Okay, so we've, we've Okay, so we've talked about Ceph. We got the Ceph object storage software that manages all the servers. You don't ever worry about what's on individual servers anymore. You want to expand it, just plug more stuff in, go to the dashboard, it plugs in, and it goes into its resource pool. Number one. Number two, you set up storage pools. And number three, you share them out to your clients. Okay, again, done in the Ceph dashboard. We help our customers with this. We're there to do it. Uh, you know, if you buy a Ceph cluster from us, we'll have it all pre-configured. We'll get it set up. We'll remote in, we'll go with you and we'll set up your pools and we'll set up your shares and we'll make sure you get everything connected. Okay, so that's what we got. So next thing, okay, next thing I want to talk about, and I'm hoping you guys can let me do another one of these. Yeah, right, we're right in the middle of this. So um, next thing that I want to talk about is uh, really to understand pools. We got to understand how we do data security and how we do uh, through redundancy. Okay, and it, it, it's teaser, it's just like RAID. Okay. It's set up, it's incredibly flexible, and so next time around, I'm going to talk about uh, what we call replication, which is like RAID 1, and I'm going to talk about erasure coding. Okay. Erasure coding is like RAID 5 and RAID 6, it's a parity scheme that gives you a much higher storage efficiency. So anyway, uh, if you have any questions, drop them below, and you want to get in touch with us, us about clustering anytime, give us a call, please. Get a hold of us, give us an email, or give us a call. Thank you very much. See you next time.